have this weird thing that's been happening to me uh, lately, which is I'm skipping. It's like what genuine happiness does to you. It physically takes over. <laughs> physical my trainer called this morning and canceled and I was like oh yes <laughs> so it's gonna be a great day all right we're also having pop quiz one of my favorite things to do on this show during our final segment we're gonna ask three questions about things that were said and done during the hour so get your mental paper and pad and pencils out um, and uh, one person will be chosen, and if they answer one or two correctly, it's $100 for every answer that's correct, 1000 if you get all three. So, <laughs> games are fun, and uh, I'm so excited. But if you really just want a fantastic prize, look no further than our first guests. And I do say plural because there's a few of them. Um, one of them happens to be a living legend, a Grammy Award winner and a trailblazer um, for the Latin arts and culture. And joining her are two very special women who I deeply admire. And I'm honored to say that they're here for the second time um, because we all started our shows last year in the pandemic. Um, but some really special things have happened to all of us along the way that I can't wait to get into. It's our friends, Gloria, Lily, and Emily Estefan! Hi, Blue! I mean, this is why. Skipping outfit, that is it. Yes. Thank you. I, I love this it. This is why people think I'm a little kooky, but I don't care because it's true. I'm so happy to see you guys. I mean, we all started our shows last year in the middle of the pandemic. It was a miracle, <laughs> right? It is a miracle, honestly. And two things have happened to both of us um, that I'm so excited about. Congratulations on getting a season two. Yay, thank you. 12 new episodes. Just started last week. Oh my God, yes. And I felt like our sister shows, um, we all got nominated for Emmys. Yay. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. That was another miracle. <laughs> miracles on miracles. You know, when we had our first um, hang last year, and with what I think the Red Table Talk, you know, institution um, has built over these years is the ability to leave it on the table, to have these profound discussions. And at a time when in some ways there's social media, TMI, so much being put out there, where are the substantive takeaways? Where are the conversations that leave us raw and vulnerable, make us feel less alone, and also mm. teach us something? I always love my experts because we, <laughs> I mean, the show is about conversation and sharing the perspective of three different generations of, in our case, Latin women in this world that we all inhabit. But at the same time, you know, there's, you, you have to make that connection with the viewer and, uh, I, yeah. I will God, say did you make a connection last week. No, with, yeah. Right, yeah. With, you know, Gloria's, um, you know, the first episode the first that we episode had. first episode has yes. been incredible. Yeah. And, Being uh, betrayed I, by yeah, trusted yes. adults. And, and, you know, the night before, that's another thing. She calls us sometimes the night before. Hey, I'm going to say this tomorrow. I'm going to go there. You know, and the producers don't even know because when you have people coming and being brave, it's almost infectious and you do feel less alone. And I made a formal request for 10 therapy sessions because I may have learned too much about my parents' sex life this season. Because she <laughs> I feel alone. I feel very alone. Hold on. <laughs> that doesn't mean I answered, all right? Yes, you did. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Hold down. Like yes, I asked all the questions. You asked too much. Emily, I, what do you mean I asked I too much? I do, you know, really. Oh, I'm your niece. 
<laughs> and people want to know. I do really. Want I didn't want to know. Okay, I told Amy to stay home, and they said, no, she's got to get picked. Listen, and she walked trail. off the table a couple uh, times in that exactly. episode. Exactly. I, I did my best, Drew, but I don't know. You guys will tell me when the show comes out. <sighs> what I do know is you started this season off um, with a true force, um, and you made a really big splash on your foray of season two by disclosing such heavy, beautiful, important, necessary topics. So will you tell us about episode yes. one of season Absolutely. two? Absolutely, Drew. Look, I, I always tell everybody when right. Claire Crawley was going to come on to talk about what she experienced at the hands of a priest when she was five years old, I, I thought to myself, I can't sit here quietly and, you know, hypocritically being quiet and keeping what I went through. And I thought, okay, I can be an example for women. And by the way, it's one in three women because we've learned more statistics since so we did the show. One it's one in three women and one in four or five boys that experiences some kind of abuse. Now we know on, because again, that we know of because right. those are the ones that speak about it. And I thought, you know, I've had a wonderful, beautiful life filled with love, filled with support. And I want anyone that's gone through this to realize that whatever trauma or terrible thing you went through does not have to define you. Now, let me ask you a question. And by the way, on a side note, Gloria, it's, we were discussing it in the room before we came out here. And, you know, the fact that you waited until your mom's passing to bring this up. Um, yeah. someone asked I had to. A, someone asked she, a question like, oh, was it because of this? And I was like, I just tapped right into my mom gut. And I said, I bet it was because... Yeah. This was not, this was something she didn't want to have her mom relive. Why? why? It was. Yeah. And she was very traumatized, Drew, because I think she had a lot of feelings of, oh my God, am I guilty of putting her in that? How is she going to know? But every time I would approach the subject with her just because I had some questions, she would really, she'd start crying out, you know, I can't deal with this. So imagine if I were to bring the public scrutiny that this brings. And I guess when you shared, um, that abuse that you endured so bravely, yes. you know, that came into my life and that's going to be in my child's life because she says, you know, you have to think about the way, the intention of the way somebody touches you. That's a core value of my life. Yes. So for, to share with everybody else. It's interesting to be a parent now myself and realize how overprotective you want to be as a parent. So I know. thank you for having these conversations. Thank you for helping us all deal with the things that we actually have to as parents and we can't run away from them. Now, are there any topics for you that are off limits for season two? Oh, I don't know if it's so much off limits as when, when we choose our topics, we try to make sure there's a value that we can bring to the viewer, a discussion that's going to make them think or offer some, you know, things that are also evergreens that are going exactly. to stand Timeless. the exactly. test of time. I, because you I also long. think that we go to places that there are no limits and we need to figure them out. Like we had some conversations, this, um, this batch of episodes, for example, we talked about colorism in the Latin community, which is something that within that world is hardly ever talked about because people are afraid and uncomfortable. There's not even a word so, for colorism yeah, in, in Spanish, in Spanish right? Part, because yeah. it's the racism within our own community, families that have one child that's so much darker than the other, and they're receiving different treatment because of which, you know, because of that. So those conversations, people are afraid to have them, but we also want to go places that people are afraid to go. So these conversations are available somewhere.